All right, so uh, the beaver meat and the muskrat meat uh, have tainted for about five weeks, and I got pretty lucky this year because the fall uh, was really warm in our area. We had uh, a few days that were in the 80s to 85 degrees, so I think I got a pretty decent taint on these, and uh, it should work pretty well. I also have most of my ingredients laid out here. Uh, these are just uh, beaver casters, dried, and then semi-dried, and then frozen. Uh, beaver sacks, uh, these are all beaver sacks as well, um, and those are those were just frozen, and then in this bag there's also uh, some just generic glands that came from a beaver. So you can find them on pretty much any uh, any mammal, and I always look for them if they're really easy to cut out while I'm skinning, I, I grab them and freeze them. So uh, same idea over here, we have these generic muskrat glands. This is a typical look at, at of a gland in any animal. You can you use these in uh, coyote gland lures, fox gland lures, uh, you can use them in coon gland lures. Um, so that's kind of the, the look for them and you can look up online where they're located. I may do a video on that at some point but uh, haven't got around to it yet. And we also have um, these two muskrat glands which are they look similar to a beaver caster and they're in about the same location um, but I just froze those and these ones are, are really uh, they're really potent actually they smell kinda similar to a beaver caster have a different smell I guess um, and then we have our sun rendered beaver tail oil uh, our deer hooves that are shaved up and some glycerin if I might need it and uh, preservative sodium benzoate so I'm gonna get started here and uh, I think I'm going to end up uh, doing four different baits, uh, one pint of muskrat meat, um, and then this should get me about three pints of uh, beaver meat, so I'll do th uh, three different kind of variations of the beaver meat bait. So I'm going to get started. <laughs> Alright, so the beaver meat I got put into these three jars and uh, it looks like I got about two-thirds of a pint um, evenly distributed in the three jars. So I'm just going to kind of work off that and uh, work my ingredients, um, kind of tailor that to two-thirds of a pint. Um, so uh, the first ingredient I'm going to work with is the beaver caster. Uh, you could blend this in a blender, but uh, it's really kind of a pain because you got to clean the blender and I don't feel like doing that so I'm just going to chop these up with a knife and um, I'm going to use uh, about a quarter of an ounce which I have this little jar here and I marked out a quarter of an ounce there. I'm going to fill this with a quarter of an ounce of beaver caster put it into each one of these as well as this one and um, Whatever I have left over, I'll preserve just as castorium. So I got a quarter ounce of uh, beaver caster in each one of these, which I will stir up, but uh, um, I'm just kind of leaving the lids on for now because I don't want it to stink too bad down here for too long um, in my basement. But uh, basically to make castorium, all you have to do is uh, add glycerin. So you chunk them up, uh, grind them or blend them if you want, put them in a jar and add glycerin so that the glycerin is uh, basically over the surface of any of the caster. So that, that's castorium right there and that should be preserved almost uh, indefinitely. So um, I will take another quarter 
ounce of castor out of here. Uh, it doesn't matter that the glycerin was in there, and I'll add it to here. I just don't feel like opening uh, that and stirring that up just yet. So, all right. So, next step is uh, we're going to put uh, one oil sack, one beaver oil sack, uh, in the contents into each one of these. So, I'll show you how I do that. Alright, so we have two beaver sacks that are relatively large and we have four beaver sacks that are pretty small. So what I'm going to do is empty the contents of one large beaver sack into two of them and then uh, two of them will get two small ones. So uh, what I want to do first is just take it and squeeze it, all the juice and everything out of the beaver sack. We'll cut off the tip first because that wasn't working very well. Um, but we're going to squeeze all the juice in there first. Uh, this is something that I just read in an old lure maker's book. You can see there's quite a bit of juice that comes out of one of those. Now once all the juice is out, we're going to take the shell of this, chop it up and put it in. Um, but I'm going to wait to do that instead of chopping up just this shell and putting it in there. Uh, I'm going to chop up all of these shells and these beaver glands, generic beaver glands, and kind of just make four different equally sized piles and put them in. So. Okay, so <clears throat> I was able to squeeze uh, the two large sacks into here and then uh, each of these got two smaller sacks. Um, the smaller sacks didn't produce nearly as much uh, sack oil, but uh, I did kind of give these ones a little bit more of the, the uh, chunks that I chopped up. I gave them a little bit bigger piles. So, you know, it is what it is. and. Uh, you can't be too picky with this stuff. We're not doing exact science with this stuff. So, um, all right, so let's see what is next. For this one, uh, we'll call this uh, beaver, beaver bait number one. I'm gonna call it a beaver only bait. And the next thing I'm gonna do is put uh, beaver tail oil in this. And I wanna stir this up and see kinda what it's starting to smell like first this beaver tail oil should be able to thicken that up a little bit but I want to smell this get it all mixed in and smell it before and after I add the beaver tail oil so I can kind of decide I don't have a recipe on how much beaver tail oil needs to go in so I'm just kind of doing guesswork here um, I was thinking around a half an ounce for this two-third pints of uh, beaver meat but we're gonna we're gonna try a half an ounce and then we'll see if we need to go up from there all right so I added half an ounce of beaver tail oil sun rendered beaver tail oil to this one and uh, I smelled it beforehand I smelled the beaver tail oil and then I smelled it after after the fact and I tell you, I can actually smell that beaver tail oil in here. So a half an ounce, um, I'm pretty happy with it. It's not overpowering, but uh, you can smell it in there. And you can even tell that it darkened up the, uh, the bait a little bit. So this is about uh, the finished product. It is pretty thick. So I might um, be adding some glycerin to the beaver baits uh, because they are so thick. But other than that... Um, 
th this is it for uh, the beaver bait number one, which is uh, I'm kind of calling uh, beaver only. So we have beaver meat, we have uh, beaver caster, beaver sack oil uh, with the beaver sacks, and we have be sun rendered beaver tail oil. So all from one animal, you got yourself, uh, you know, a pretty good predator bait. Hopefully, we'll we're gonna give it a shot and see how it does. All right, so number two beaver bait. Um, I have the beaver tail oil added, one half ounce, and now I'm gonna move on to uh, adding some of these deer hoof flakes. And let's see, we'll just use this. And I think I'm gonna do, because it's a dry ingredient, uh, I think it's gonna need some help it's going to really need um, quite a bit of it. I don't think it's going to have a strong smell without adding quite a bit. I think I'm going to add one whole ounce of this. So I'm going to give that a try. I don't know if I'm going to be able to smell it, um, but I'll see. I'll, I'll give it a test try. I'll smell this beforehand and smell it after and see if I notice a difference. I can't notice a difference. Um, I think it's safe to add another whole ounce to that. Honestly, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try it. Well, so I've added two ounces, um, and I can't smell it one bit. But uh, maybe. You know, maybe a coyote will be able to. Um, I don't more, really want to add too much more than two ounces. Uh, I have some ideas for this stuff in the future. Uh, I was researching it after after I uh, decided to kind of put it in shavings. Um, and there are people who use horse hooves, and they use horse hooves. Uh, they soak them, um, and then it kind of like an oily substance comes off of that and they use that in their lures. So I'm going to experiment around with that and maybe that will have a more potent smell um, and I'll be able to to actually smell it in the lure uh, or bait um, that I use it in. But I'm definitely going to sp experiment around with that. So I'm going to leave this one as is. Alright, so beaver bait number three, uh, I'm just going to kind of call it a little bit of everything. Um, and this one I'm going to add a long distance call to. Uh, I'm going to use skunk essence for that. Uh, I added the rest of my deer hoof shavings, uh, which was really, I think it was two and a half ounces right around there. So this one has two and a half ounces of the shavings in it. And uh, when I add the skunk essence, that stuff's outside. I don't keep that stuff inside. So um, that's going to be pretty much the last thing I do right before I add the sodium benzoate and the uh, and possibly the glycerin to see how much I want to thicken this or uh, kind of paste this up a little bit. So, all right. So three three down, one to go. So for uh, the last of the muskrat bait, um, I'm using all of my muskrat glands just because. Uh, I don't feel like saving them in the freezer again. We got trapping season coming up and I'll be able to collect some more. Um, I'll just uh, end up chopping these up, maybe just measure them in there just to see what it's like, uh, see how much I do so I can record that and um, if this is a killer bait then I'll, then I'll know for the future how much I used. Um, but that's the idea and this is, uh, these Generic glands are off of a few different muskrat. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I only got one uh, set of male uh, kind of caster looking glands off the muskrat. All right, so I take that back. Um, I'm going to, because this one's called a little bit of everything, 
uh, I'm going to add some of these muskrat glands to this one. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just take half. It looks, well, let's measure it and see what it actually is. I think it's right around a quarter. Yeah, it's right around a quarter. So that was a quarter. This is a quarter of an ounce of generic muskrat glands. And this one is probably just a little bit less. But we're going to split that one in half again. Alright, so um, those are the basic ingredients for all of these. I, I am going to add some glycerin to the beaver. Uh, it is just really, really thick. Muskrat is almost soupy. It's, uh, it almost seems like this tainted way more than the beaver. Um, so I don't know if anybody else has had that experience where muskrat taints a lot quicker uh, or a lot more. Um, if you have, let me know. Uh, but the beaver seems to be a lot more mild. The muskrat smells, uh, I mean, it's potent. So um, I'm about ready. All I need to do uh, is go get my essence real quick from outside. I don't keep that stuff inside, so I'll go get that. Add a few drops. I was planning on adding maybe three, four drops of uh, skunk, pure skunk essence. I extracted it from the, the glands on the skunk. Uh, I'll mix that in really quickly. Hopefully it doesn't stink this up too much down here. Uh, and then I'll be ready to add sodium benzoate and glycerin to these three. So give me one sec. Alright, so here's the skunk essence. I just got a tiny bit in a syringe. I'm going to see how much I got. Three. This is about four drops. We're going to just go ahead and try to squeeze the rest of that in there. Whatever was in there is going to get mixed in. And that is potent stuff. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and put the sodium benzoate in the uh, muskrat bait because it is... Uh, Definitely soupy enough, and I don't want it anymore. I don't want to add any glycerin to that one, but uh, it calls for two tablespoons uh, per pint, and we have just about a pint, so I'm going to go ahead and just add two tablespoons uh, to each one of these. So the next ones, I'm going to go ahead and add some glycerin to each one of these. Glycerin is kind of just a filler. It doesn't really matter how much you add. It, it does have a sweet taste, smell to it, so they, the animals will smell something but um, it's really just a filler. All right, that's it. Um, I have four different kind of flavors of, of bait here, uh, all from most of the ingredients you can uh, harvest yourself for free. Uh, the only two ingredients that I had to purchase were the sodium benzoate and uh, the glycerin, which are relatively cheap uh, compared to buying a whole bait or lure at the store. So um, this one, it's beaver only. That's uh, kind of interesting. If you catch a beaver, you have uh, you can make this bait right here just from everything that the beaver provides you, and it's a great canine bait. Um, got a bunch of different smells in it just from a beaver so uh, that's kind of cool one uh, this one I'm kind of just experimenting with to see if uh, the deer hoofs do anything um, I know I I researched uh, using hooves as a bait um, 
a little bit online and I, I did read that some other people do it except they use uh, typically they use horse hooves uh, and they put them in like a solution boil them and some some sort of oil rises to the surface uh, and they use that so I'm going to experiment with that probably next year um, uh, this one is a little bit of everything that I had available to me that I knew would uh, be attractive to uh, canines. So it's got a little bit of long distance call to it. It'll be used later in the winter. Um, and then this one I thought was a little bit interesting just because uh, the way the muskrat meat kind of taint, uh, tainted compared to the beaver meat. Uh, this was way more soupy. Um, but, uh, and it smelled way more potent, so I think I'm going to use this as uh, kind of like a mid-season bait. Um, I'll use this as my late-season bait, and I'll experiment with these in the beginning of the season. So, uh, the sodium benzoate, it does take 7 to 10 days for full effect is what it says. So, that means over the next week, uh, i got to keep checking on these, make sure that it's not building up too much pressure or kind of leave them cracked a little bit. Um, so that they don't really explode uh, but I mean over the next few few days tomorrow trapping season opens so um, I'm gonna be using these two at least and I'll just keep an eye on these so uh, anyway that, that was pretty fun I hope you uh, enjoyed that and we even got ourselves some uh, castorium which is known as the universal attractor to animals all animals I mean beaver muskrat deer, canines, everything. So that, that was kind of fun too. Uh, super easy to make. But uh, that about covers it and uh, I appreciate you watching. Uh, if you like videos like this, subscribe to my channel. Uh, thanks for watching again and good luck out there.